All right, guys, so check it out. So you're looking to start a new nutrition program, and you're not really sure where to start. You have a lot of friends that might be doing keto, or they might be doing primal, or they might be doing paleo. And along that route, you're starting to hear about counting macros or adjusting your macros. And if that ends up being a little bit too much for what you're looking for, because after all, you're just trying to lean out a little bit, get healthy, make better choices, what does it mean when we talk about macros? We're gonna cover that in a little bit more in this video. And by the time you're done, you're gonna have a better understanding on how to dial in exactly what you are looking for for your body. You might find that you have a priority for muscle gain. You might have a priority for weight loss. But let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to go ahead and cover all that in this video. All right, guys, so check it out. So you've heard about macros. You might even have been given some ideas or some direction from a friend on how to start going about counting macros. Now, we did this other video. We did a previous video on some Nutrition Basics 101. Go ahead and you can click on that video up here. In that video, we kind of cover what the macronutrients are, proteins, carbs, and fats. Very high level dialogue on just what those mean, give you some familiarity with the vernacular. But when you actually go to apply some of that and what it means by to do macros or to get macros, there is a preset number of proteins, carbs, and fats that you're going to pursue based on what your overall objective is for your health and your fitness. If you're prioritizing muscle building, you might find that your macros are gonna be more slanted towards carbohydrate dominance versus protein and fat. If you're looking to lean out, you might find that a higher protein macro is in order for you and that's gonna help you burn fat more. And along the way, if you're looking for general health, you might find that if you've been eating too little fat for too long, that you can actually adjust the fat intake as well for heart health, brain health, and hormones, okay? So to balance out your hormones. So what you want is it's not just an easy question and it's not a really easy answer. As long as you have an idea as to what your objectives are though, you're over halfway. Now the other part of this, if you're ready to get started, typically with macros, and here's the craziest part of it all, is that it is different, individual to individual, bio-individuality, there's this concept that you're going to have a better combination of carbs, protein, and fats than perhaps somebody close to you, or a buddy, or a spouse. And you might find that while you thrive on a higher carb intake, your spouse might thrive on a higher protein intake. Very individualistic. And the cool thing about finding this out or going on this journey is that you can discover what's best for you. Don't be too discouraged if you get into the, you get into the macro program that you're pursuing and you might find that it doesn't fit right away. You might find that you're a little sluggish. You might find that you've got increased brain fog. You might find that you are, can run all day and you've got fantastic energy. Everybody's got something different. And when you start out, it's easiest on macros to start with a little bit of a priority in protein to see how you go throughout the day. And again, if you're looking for weight gain, it's gonna be a little bit slightly different. So let me give you just a couple examples. If you are looking to lose a few pounds and you wanted to prioritize protein, so we know that protein diets have a higher incidence of muscle mass, leaner instances of body fat. So if you're on a higher protein diet, typically one gram to 1.2 grams, depending on how active you are per pound of body weight, you're going to go ahead and you're going to adjust your macros accordingly. So if you're a 150 pound person and you wanna bring in 150 grams of protein a day, that's gonna be your starting point. Now typically with a macro, we're trying to figure out out of a 100% quota, we want a certain percentage to go towards protein, a certain percentage to go towards carbs, and then a certain percentage to go towards fat. Every person's different. So I'm not gonna give you real hard and fast guidelines here. A kind of nice place to start would be 50% protein, 30% carbs, 20% fat. That's just to get you started, okay? Now what's kind of hurt us over the years and from the 80s to the 90s to the early 2000s, we have seen that one of those macros or another has been vilified over the other. It used to be that calories was the king thing to do and then it was don't eat carbs, then it was don't eat fat, fat's dangerous, carbs are bad, and now we're left with this kind of dysfunction where we don't really know what to do. Macros kind of settles that, and the idea is you do need all three, all three are important, but you don't need them probably in the proportions that you think. So we talked about a general guideline just a second ago, 50% protein, 30% carbs, 20% fat. Once you run with that for a little while, you make adjustments. If you find that your weight is going up one or two pounds over a course of a week or two, then you're gonna to wanna to dial back on one of those and adjust the others. Now here's something else to keep in mind. Your body weight, your lean muscle mass, your activity level, they're all gonna play into this as well. If you don't have a great understanding, you have to experiment. And the only way to do a real experiment is that you've gotta track as much data as possible. And in the previous videos that we've done on nutrition, we did talk about the importance and the benefits of recording or journaling your food 
Go ahead and give that a shot, guys. There's a link in the description below on a food scale. You don't need anything crazy. You don't have to go overboard with trying to make this work. You just need data. And the more data you have, the more efficient you're gonna be in making changes when things don't go right. Or more importantly, you might find that you hit a great streak on the percentage of macros that works for you to maintain lean body mass. And a year from now, you might want to get back to that position and those notes in that journal are going to be beneficial to you so that you know what worked for you in the past. That way you're not just eyeballing it every day. The other thing with macros is that the only truly efficient way to know if it's going to work is that you've got to be super diligent, okay? You are not able to do it 100% on Monday, 80% on Tuesday, 90% on Wednesday. If you come at that in this fashion, you're gonna find that you're just gonna be all over the place. You're not giving your body enough time to adjust to the macro percentages or to dial in the exact nutritional intake that you're striving for, and you're just gonna be all over the place. You're gonna be discouraged and it's not gonna work. So please take the time to document. Go ahead and set a goal. If you're looking for, let me give you a couple other examples real quick. If you are looking to prioritize muscle, you might find that you wanna do 50% carbs for a short duration of time, and then do 30 protein and then 20 fat. That's also another way to go with this, all right? So there are a lot of op options and a lot of opportunities for you guys to discover, figure out what works best for you. Remember, it's not a one size fits all. The more time you put into tracking your data and making slight adjustments, the better it's gonna be for you. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for sharing. If there's anything that you'd specifically like to see a video on, please leave it in the comments. I answer all of them myself and stay on it, guys. Stay in the fight. Can't wait to see you on the next video.